Um, what we uh, worked with was just a John Deere vacuum meter. Um, actually had, you know, kind of like a four row planter is what we were working with at the university, but same across all the boards. Um, so there's a small modification for seed, you know, seed spacing and minimum losses. As y'all know, you know, canola seeds are extremely tiny. We're, we're working with sorghum seed plate. That's what we found to look at, to work with, but we still have to um, make some adjustments to make sure we don't lose any seeds. The biggest thing that happens here, and you can see, it's kind of hard to see on the slide. You know, I, I would contemplate bringing equipment in and all, but I figured I'd end up making more of a mess with seeds and everything else in here than anything. But when you've got your seed plate in, a little gap will form, you know, on the bottom, or not necessarily on the bottom, but the gap can form from wobble, that's not really a technical term, but wobble in the seed plate as you turn it or rotate it around. So what you want to do is Start um, by adjusting the metering hub, you know, try tightening that down and the instructions are with your planner on that. You know, that's pretty simple. So try the simple thing first. The simple thing doesn't work, you know, move on to something else. And said so if it doesn't work, we're gonna try to um, do some manual adjustments or whatever to the seed plate. And so I've got some pictures to kind of show these steps here in just a second. But you wanna start by marking the T-handle on the disc. So basically wherever it's at, line it up, put a dot on the T-handle, dot on the disc, so you align it in the correct spot every time, so you're fixing it at the correct spot. And you might want to go, and well, no, not might want to, you do want to go through and mark all your disc for um, your number them. You know, if you're on an eight row planner, start with one to eight, so you make sure you put them back on the correct row, et cetera, et cetera, because if you go through and fix it, the way I'm going to tell you, it's kind of a permanent fix, and you, if you move it to another row, you might have wobble at another spot based on it. Um, but once you mark it, what we want to do, you know, mark the row number and mark where the T-handle lines up. Just slowly rotate it by hand and see where that gap forms. Where that gap forms, I want to put basically two lines there, the beginning and the end of the gap, and to move on to kind of illustrate what I'm saying. My two lines, there's little errors drawn there pointing, you know, into, into the gap to know that between these two lines, this is where I'm going to focus on and going to work on what I'm trying to fix. And here you can see, I know it's real shiny, so it's hard to see the actual silver dot there, but there's a silver dot there and a silver dot right there. So I come back in and I line my T-handle back up correctly with um, my seed plate when I put it back in. So after that, what I wanna do is basically transfer those two marks that I had on the seed plate up to the center of the seed plate here, where it's basically rotating around. And this is where I'm gonna say that it's high or that it's rubbing to cause that wobble because something there's pushing it out. So if it's wobbling and pushing out, you know, what's gonna happen, those canola seeds are just gonna start dumping out of the seed, you know, out of the seed plate everywhere. You're gonna lose them. You're not gonna get them in the field like you want to. So what I wanna do, like I said, I said earlier, it was kind of a permanent a fixture. I'm gonna lightly file that area that I've marked right here. You know, just take it off, file it a little bit all the way around, stick it back on, rotate it by hand and check it, see if the gap's still there. And this, you know, you might have to do this process a couple of times till you eliminate that gap. Once the gap's eliminated, you shouldn't have any seed losses at the bottom of the planter seed plate right there. Next thing, once you get that fixed, um, we want to look at the vacuum level. You know, once the seeds don't leak, we want to uh, set the correct vacuum level. And there's, you know, there's a range there, but since, again, since canola seeds are smaller and lighter, we want to work with this and kind of adjust it. Test that we've ran on tabletop seed drill, and I've got some graphs to show vacuum levels here in a second. But I think you want to use, you know, work with knockout wheels. If you don't, too many of the seeds stay lodged in the seed plate as you um, are trying to plant and you're basically, you know, losing seeds. That, well, you're not necessarily losing them. You're not getting them in the ground like you're supposed to. Instead of getting optimum rate, I would say, is four to five seeds per cell, which I'll get to in a second. You're not getting that out of the cell as it rotates around. And so this kind of shows you that. With the, um, this is the seeds we're removing from vacuum level on the bottom, you know, up to about nine, ten uh, inches of water. And without the knock knockout wheels are here in the red, I know it's hard to see on the handouts, they probably give you because it's in black and white, but um, this is without, this is with. So there's a significant increase in seeds being removed and actually planted when you use the knockout wheels versus when you're not using them. All right, so what are we looking at though? What does this actually mean when I'm talking about, I'm using a sorghum seed plate and some of y'all might already do this, so this is, maybe review, but we'll say, you know, optional we're shooting for four to five seeds per cell, rough conversion, about 120,000 seeds per pound for canola. So if we're looking at that, we'll say working at about 10 inches of uh, water for about four to five pounds of canola, you'll need about 10,000 to 12,000 seeds per acre. That's what you set the metering hub for. You know, about four to five miles an hour, it's gonna be running at 45 to 65 RPM. And there's a graph to kind of represent that. That's four seeds per acre, 
or I mean four seeds per cell, five seeds per cell, you know, somewhere in that range. Basically, if you're looking at your sorghum seeding rate here at um, seeds per acre, and you're looking at the canola rate at pounds per acre. So each pound is 120,000 seeds. So you can work through that, kind of see where it comes from. Now to move on from the row crop planter, I, I will say we use the John Deere. That's not the stuff that we did is not actually recommended by John Deere. I guess a little disclaimer. You know, that's recommended by us at Extension stuff we've done there. You, if you want to, you can try to contact John Deere and see if they have better recommendations for their planters for you to use. But that's what we recommend. What's worked for us.